Hello, you're watching The Wire. Today is the 18th of April and this is the daily coronavirus updates. 14,378 people have been infected by the virus in India so far. 1,992 people have been cured and 480 have died. Of the total fatalities, 201 have been in Maharashtra, which continues to be the worst affected state in India. The Ministry of Health told the media today that no fresh cases were reported from 22 districts across 12 states. Over 900 new infections were reported in a single day. Globally, the number of infections rose to 15 lakh and the United States continues to remain the worst hit. A woman who had delivered a child two days ago at a hospital in Ranchi has tested positive for COVID-19. The baby has been isolated at the hospital. The medical superintendent of the hospital has told news agencies that the child was allowed to be fed by the mother. Earlier, the ICMR and the WHO have issued guidelines for pregnant women saying that the virus cannot be transmitted by breastfeeding. The Union Home Ministry has asked all states and union territories to screen Rohingya Muslims for COVID-19, as many of them had attended the Tablighi Jamaat congregation in Delhi's Nizamuddin. The ministry said that Rohingyas residing in camps in Hyderabad had attended the Tablighi Jamaat meeting at Haryana's Mewat and had also attended the meeting at Delhi's Nizamuddin. The Home Ministry's notice also said that Rohingyas living in Delhi's Shram Vihar and Shaheen Bagh, who had gone to attend the Tablighi Jamaat meeting, had not returned to their camps. The Gujarat government today planned to carry out plasma transfusion treatment on COVID-19 patients in the state, particularly those in critical condition. In this treatment, the plasma is extracted from the blood of a fully recovered COVID-19 patient and injected into a critical patient to help his body generate antibodies to fight the virus. The governments of Delhi, Punjab and Kerala have also given a nod to this therapy. This week, the ICMR advised hospitals to submit proposals for carrying out plasma therapy on critically ill patients. The ICMR will conduct a study to find the efficacy of the BCG vaccine against COVID-19. The ICMR has said that till any definitive result is reached, it will not recommend the vaccine even for healthcare workers. Researchers in Boston, Australia and the Netherlands have also been conducting trials to investigate the potential of the BCG against the novel coronavirus. Chabu Mandal, a 35-year-old painter in Gurgaon, was a migrant from Bihar who hanged himself to death on Thursday. His family had not eaten anything on Wednesday and even before that, they were relying on meals distributed for free in the area. According to a report published in the Indian Express, on Thursday morning before hanging himself to death, Mandal sold his mobile phone for 2,500 rupees and used the money to purchase a portable fan and some ration for his family. In the afternoon, he took his life. The Gurgaon police told the newspaper that the man was mentally troubled. Mandal's family said that ever since the lockdown started, they could not find food to eat. Even the free distributed meals would not come every day. This had been troubling him and his family, they told the newspaper. Nigerian President's Chief of Staff, Abba Kayari, died on Friday after contracting the new coronavirus. Kayari, who was in his 70s, had underlying health problems including diabetes. He was the top official aide to the 77-year-old Nigerian president and one of the most important people in Nigeria. While the coronavirus disease has largely spared children, a report published by the United Nations says that social and economic fallout of the pandemic may have the most lasting consequences for the young. Researchers in the report have found that as schools remain closed, families lose income, food resources become scarce, the needs of children will go unmet. According to the report, measle immunization campaigns have been stopped in at least 23 countries and sick children are unable to access care as required. Because of this, hundreds of thousands of children could die and millions could be plunged into poverty. School closures around the world have also led to a lack of nutrition among children as nearly half of the world's total children rely on school as daily source of food. To read more news and analysis, visit The Wire and The Wire Science. We will see you on Monday. Until then, stay safe.